Okay. Hello out there, people. Um, here I am back again, Cap Roberts, with another gun review for you. Alright. What I have here today is uh, one pistol I didn't think I'd ever own myself. But uh, I had to pick this one up because I was interested in getting a 7.62 but 25mm shooter. And I had one years ago that was a CZ-52. Loved that pistol very much. Thought it was a fantastic buy. Unfortunately, I traded it in for a nine mil or a, yeah, a nine millimeter at the time, and ended up getting rid of the nine millimeter too. But now I have this, and this is the Zastava M57A. Now, according to Zastava's website, they call it the M57A. Uh, when I purchased it on the box, it only said M57. So, don't get confused on that. Um, <clears throat> there are actually two different versions of this that Zastava makes. There's an M57 and the M57A. Now, the M57A is the version that you can get over here in the United States. Uh, it's just that it is the uh, it is the version that has to have an external safety on it. As you can see right here, there is an external safety. So just uh, just note that that's all the A stands for is, is the version that has a safety. Now let's get on to re this review uh, a little bit further. Uh, Let's start with uh, basically the only stats I can really find on this gun. Uh, actually, comes from uh, Zastava itself, their website. And as I mentioned earlier, this gun fires a 7.62 but 25 millimeter round. That's the round right there. Uh, as you can see, it's a neck down 30 caliber round. Uh, very high speed. Uh, little pest a uh, little pistol round uh, it has been around ever since I believe World War II uh, the Russians used the round in World War II to uh, uh, to uh, as their uh, as their pistol round of choice now um, Back here to where I was here. Smartphones outsmarting me again. All right. Anyway, the um, the M fifty seven A by Zastava. Uh, as you can see here, it is a nine. I have these lined out here to show you. It's a nine shot magazine. And when you buy the gun, you get two of them. Okay. And. Uh, that is a bonus. Now, the cheapest I've seen spare mags go for is about twenty-four ninety-five. Uh, that's about the lowest cost I've seen on them. Um, the weight here it shows that it's uh, 0.88 kilograms, whatever that is in English. Uh, it's a fairly heavy pistol. That's what I can tell you. It's a fairly heavy pistol. Now, the barrel length on this is about a 4-inch barrel length, okay? Um, it's the only thing I could really find on it. Um, she's, uh, like I said, she's a fairly heavy pistol. I like the barrel length. I like the gun overall. Generally, I did not like the talker of pistols when they first came in the United States uh, because of primarily the safety that was on them. You either had it back here, you had it here, uh, but uh, they were an afterthought. And the only reason they came into the country with uh, that kind of safety on them was for the sure fact that in order for a gun to be imported into the United States, by law, it has to have a safety, an external safety. Well, this one has an external safety uh, but this safety is not an afterthought like the original talk revs were uh, this is actually designed into the gun I'll see if I can show you this a little bit easier but whenever you put the safety on 
you actually see the hammer move. And that's because back here in the back, I don't know if you can see it really good, but back here in the back, there's actually a uh, firing pin block that goes up whenever you put the uh, the safety on. Now, while well, I have it cocked here, I'll show you the other safety that I actually put on here. And this is one that I know a lot of people don't like, but I'm not particularly fond of it myself, but you work with what you get on the gun. Now, here's the second mag. It's empty. And the safety check. As you can see, it is empty as well. Nothing in the chamber. Okay. Hammer's cocked back. Safety is on fire. Up is fire. Down is safe. It's up on fire. Trigger's locked. This also has a magazine disconnect safety. I know a lot of people don't like that, but um, it is there. It's what you got to work with. But put the magazine in, and I can put the hammer forward. Now, the safety also does not have a drop hammer safety. It doesn't. It doesn't drop the hammer at all. If you've got to, uh, as you can see. The safety does work, disconnects the trigger from the hammer, but uh, if you do need to release the hammer forward, you have to do it by squeezing the trigger and letting, this, and letting the hammer go forward gently. Now you can't do that while you're in safe mode. Uh, you can't do that while you get on safe. There's no way to do that. So. Uh, like I said, the magazines are a nine shot capacity plus one. That gives you a full 10 rounds. It's not all that bad. Also, I was noticing when I was shooting this that the hammer, if you're not wearing gloves, will bite you. Uh, it doesn't really hurt all that bad when it does, but after a while when you start bleeding, uh, and the hammer bites it a little bit too many times, you will notice that it does sting a little bit. But the hammer will bite. It will pinch. Okay, so be watchful of that. Um, when I've been shooting this thing, and I would say I've already pumped probably about 300 rounds through this already, and have enjoyed it. Uh, I didn't think I'd enjoy a Tucker style pistol, but this one is actually pretty enjoyable to shoot however I will have range footage for you guys um, it'll probably be in a part two but with this one um, I'm definitely gonna have to adjust the sights now you'll notice the sights are just standard military uh, this is a dovetail type rear sight and you can you'll have to get a uh, a punch and uh, a tap hammer just to more or less just move it windage uh, elevation there's really nothing you can do about that except maybe uh, you can adjust here a little bit on your um, on your windage as well but other than that there's really not a whole lot of adjustment you can do besides Kentucky windage now when it comes to ammunition for this thing, uh, my original ammunition that I shot through this was uh, old Bulgarian uh, loads that I had had when I had my CZ-52. Now that means they've been sitting in, a, in my ammo containment box for many, many years, more along the lines of about uh, 10 to 12 years. Uh, firing them through this I had noticed that they were corrosive rounds so they did some damage to the barrel very little though um, I did notice that there was uh, that this barrel is not protected like chrome lined or nitrite uh, uh, type protection on it so that being said, be careful of what ammunition you get. Now I have here, uh, this is some loads I've had a long time ago, but these were uh, back when the Tokarevs and the uh, CC-52s were pretty abundant on the market. 
Uh, I had purchased these, and I believe these are Hornadays, old Hornadays, uh, that they made for this. And uh, these ran really, really good. Um, with these, I did notice that my gun was shooting. You'll see probably on range footage that it was shooting low and right, very low and right. But that's process of eliminating with this thing. Um, I'll just have to adjust my sights doing that. Now, also, you can also get... Now, this was the cheapest ammo I could find. And this is uh, Red Army Standard. Uh, as you can see, it's a steel-cased round. Uh, but they shoot pretty clean. Uh, I actually do like them. They don't seem to jam in a chamber like a lot of people say is a problem with steel case rounds but they do shoot pretty good and clean now this was the other brass rounds I was able to find at a pretty cheap cost and these are PPUs now these are really nice to shoot I do, I've been impressed with PPU I fired them out of I fired PPU ammunition out of my AR-15 and my Glock and I fired them out of this thing as well and this seems to be pretty nice brass ammo uh, also you are able to reload these um, and uh, I can also reload these as well now Lee and Hornaday are not uh, Hornaday but Lee and RCBS do make reloading dice for the 7.62 but 25 ammunition um, and you can get a hold of reloading equipment for it. Now, um, I thought the I thought the gun shot very well. the The recoil was not that bad. Uh, muzzle flip was still there. Um, the The muzzle flip is going to be eh, pretty. I'm going to say it's going to be just like a 1911. Uh, because as you can see your bore axis is fairly high up here uh, to me it seems like it's just the same height as that of a, a 1911 so you're still going to get pretty good muzzle flip on it but if you use your proper grip you can still keep the gun under control and keep it on target okay now you're probably wondering how well does this thing take down well, if you're used to a Tokarev, then you're going to be used to disassembling this thing. Yes, you have to pull this off right back here. Okay, and once you do that, okay, I always sit there and to get that pin out, I have to pull back a little bit, get a little pressure off that. And you just slide this forward, and there you go. Look at that. The whole upper is off. Now, uh, as you can see, okay, as you can see, you got to pull this out first. And do not worry about this. This is not broken. This is the way it's designed. Even the original Tokarevs, they had this same type of pivoting guide rod. Okay. Then once you got the guide rod out, you're able to, to turn this 180. Pull your bushing out, and your barrel comes right out. Now you will notice, kind of similar, in a sense, to the 1911 in style. Um, a little bit, but I would say the Russians, when they designed this up, when Tokarev designed this up, I would say it was definitely, you know, his own design completely. But it's still it's still pretty close. Uh, John Browning had a beautiful design idea, and Tokarev I think just was a like mind on it and designed this gun. Now the variation you will find on it from a John from a, a 1911 is this. Okay, this is the full trigger mechanism. Uh, don't know why they did this, but in in my honest opinion I think this might have been for manufacturing reasons uh, because 
you ever put this together, you ever put these together, and then you have this being made, and all you got to do in assembly is just drop it in. Drop that in, and you can start putting your gun together. Made it easier for your gunsmiths to sit there and put everything back together with ease. Alright. Uh, now, I can see the complaint for out in the field where it would be difficult. You know, that if you lost your trigger mechanism, yeah, that's pretty bad. Or if you dropped it in the mud, okay, that would be even just as bad. But, as you can see, it goes back together. I like to pull the hammer back. Okay, it goes back together pretty easy, so to speak. It's actually the first time I have a little trouble getting it back. mechanism would seat it all the way. Alright. Then once you're back there. That's the part where I like over the John Brown design. It makes it a little bit easier to get that in. Um, as you can see it's not all that hard to disassemble. If you're used to a talker of it disassembles the same way. Uh, all this really is is just a variation, just a, a modernization of the original M57 talker of, about Yugoslavia. Um, now also the nine shot mags, you cannot use your old talker of mags on it because they were eight shot. Which is bad, but still. Then um, magazine disconnect safety, safety here, uh, that's three variations upon this upon the original design. But the weight of this gun, it is heavy, but I like that. That helps keep the recoil down a little bit because this is a very fast round. Uh, impacts very quick. So anyway, my thoughts on this overall is that it's well worth the purchase. Um, MSRP on these things... Um, I believe the MSRP they were um, looking on these things. Oh, I can't remember what they showed on it, but MSRP is what you'll pretty much find them for. Uh, you can find them for about two forty six, two fifty somewhere around there, uh, from like JNG Sales. Uh, you can also uh, get them for about three hundred from other places. Uh, I paid about 300 for it at uh, CYA Guns or from 20 Texas, and to me it was it was well worth the purchase. Uh, solid steel guns, so that way, uh, if if I do miss with the uh, with the rounds to where I you know am shooting really really bad, then I could probably beat them to death with the gun itself. I mean that's how sturdy built this thing's made. Um, uh, for me, I like it. I think it's well worth the purchase on it. Um, and also, last round hold open. Um, just a, uh, a fantastic little pistol to shoot. Um, so I would suggest if you like Tokarevs and you don't want to buy one of the old ones because you like me, you don't like the safeties that they had on them uh, at that time, then I would get one of these. The Zasava M57. Zasava M57. Okay. Um, its actual name by Zasava itself on their website is the M57A. Uh, magazines run you about $24.95 a piece, and the ammunition is right about there. I believe I paid $17 on Red Army Standard. And 21 on PPU. 
Uh, Winchester also makes rounds for them. So uh, so does uh, Seller and Bellet, but uh, they're uh, they're about the same. They're about anywhere from about twenty to twenty seven dollars, all uh, per box of fifty. All depends on who you get them from. Okay. Uh, Hornaday did make a uh, XTP hollow point form at one time. I don't know if you can still get a hold of those. I've been looking for them. Hadn't seen them yet. Uh, but I'm sure somebody makes a hollow point round for this uh, for this pistol. Uh, anyway, if like I said, if you like talker devs, but you don't like the old safeties at the head on them, um, then I would definitely suggest this gun. I've enjoyed shooting it, and will continue to enjoy shooting it. So, anyway, you privateers out there, enjoy shooting, have fun.